What is real? What is fake? If a robot talked to you, would you know that you were talking to a robot? Yeah, of course. I'm not dumb. It would have gears and cogs, and its voice would sound like it was going out of skull candy headphones. What a terrible question. If I wasn't legally obligated to give you a public education, I'd ask you to leave the Socratic seminar. Could I tell a person from a robot? Easily. <laughs> Eat your heart out, Isaac Asimov. Most robots need WD-40 applied to their cyber larynx every 15 minutes. It's pretty easy to tell that a normal person doesn't need to drink any WD-40 unless they're thirsty. Not to mention, robots have superhuman strength. They move all weird like Michael Jackson. We have a whole dance named after how they move so weird. It's called the cha-cha slide. Seriously though, the robot? We don't, we don't have many of those. We looked at robots and we said, those things are freaks to such an extent that emulating them will make you the prince of a community center bar mitzvah. But AI, AI is a different topic. AI doesn't work like that. I can't hit AI over the head with a brick to reveal sparking wires. Trust me, I've tried and all it revealed to me is that Apple Care does not cover intentional violence. Way to lose a customer, Tim Cook. Now I'm gonna supervise all of my arms deals on a Surface Pro. The meteoric rise of what we've dubbed artificial intelligence, often large language models or other automated processes advertised as artificial intelligence is taking the world by storm. It seems like every business, every website, every social media is implementing these technological innovations as quickly as possible, both benefiting from and contributing to the AI boom. And the most recent example of this, Instagram or Meta's celebrity AIs, modeled after the voices, personalities, and physical likenesses of some of the largest celebrities in the world. Could this be the end of social media as we know it? I don't know. Why are you asking me? Are you are you demanding emotional labor from Are you love bombing me? Hey girlies, welcome back to Santa's workshop. The elves have unionized, so they finally get suicide nets. It's a Christmas miracle. If you subscribe right now, I'll do one surgery live stream for a lucky viewer. It's gonna be on their face because I need eyes. My LASIK machine has been on the fritz and I have some unhappy customers. How are we all doing today? I'm feeling like the day I was born, scared, naked, and I just recut my umbilical cord. AI influencers, they're not new, but they are improved. Technically, we've seen unreal influencers making the rounds for a while now, from the surreal monotone character of Poppy earlier on, to the more recently 3D modeled FN Mecca and Michaela, to the Quebblecop AI that we discussed a while back, but Instagram wants to do something a little bit more intense. A few weeks ago, Meta launched 28 AI accounts, all modeled after celebrities, a decision that made me say, what's up? <laughs> Wait, what's up? Powered by Meta's open source large language model called Llama 2, their AI seeks to chat directly with users to answer questions or share information, such as what to grab for lunch or the best hiking trails nearby. Meta AI also has access to real-time information and can generate images from text prompts in a matter of seconds. It will use the celebrity's likeness and conversational styles as a mask, as Dazed wrote about the chat boxes. They add it will hide the overwhelming complexity under the surface. Now these accounts are broad and cover a huge range of subjects, but they all have a few central calling cards. One, they were all made in the last month and a half or so and don't seem to post all that much. Most of the accounts have between around five and 10 posts and anywhere from 2,000 to 150,000 followers. So essentially they're loser nobodies and they should consider getting their bands up before talking to me. Two, they are modeled after celebrities. A huge range too. You might see Tom Brady and Kendall Jenner and Dwayne Wade, but they also have Paris Hilton, random other minor celebrities, the pinhead from Hellraiser, the Eraserhead baby, and a homophobic Midwestern lacrosse coach. Three, all of these accounts are themed weirdly enough. For instance, Dwayne, Wade. Clone account says that he's an award-winning triathlete. Of course, that's not who Dwayne Wade is, but it's at least connected to his real persona by a spindly cord of athleticism. On the other hand, Dwayne Wade. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I got it right this time. We can all rest easy. Okay, I'm gonna start that clip over again. On the other hand, Paris Hilton is a crime-solving detective, whereas in real life, she is attempting to corral hundreds of Dalmatians to be made into a glamorous coat. Four, the content from these accounts ranges. Sometimes it's entirely AI. These posts that are created are demarcated with a watermark that says made with AI technology. Some of it is partially AI created and some of it is just real stuff. So you have to evaluate posts on a case-by-case -case basis, just like every post these days. Right now, we're working on Roram and AI. So while what you see 
see on screen right now is real. In four to five months, this whole operation will fit on a 16 megabyte USB drive and will be used by the CIA to roll out deep state propaganda about Operation Inherent Resolve. And the fifth thing these accounts have in common are that they function as chatbots, which is to say that they use a large language model and are designed to give responses when you message them that evoke a certain personality or expertise. They're sort of playing a character, but still, it's clearly them. I started a chat with Padma Lakshmi's Lorena, a travel expert. When I told her about my upcoming trip to Porto and Lisbon and my interest in food, she recommended specific dishes to try, followed by suggestions for day trips outside the cities. Throughout, a recording of Lakshmi stared at me through a small box in the corner of my screen as though we were on FaceTime. At times, she appeared disgusted. Still, Lorena's tips were solid and didn't feel entirely distinct from the types of things we can imagine Lakshmi saying on her own travel and food shows. While many of the bots seem designed for some specific utility, others are more for comfort and entertainment. Kendall Jenner, for example, is Billy, a ride-or-die older sister. Another star in a sibling role, Mr. Beast is the big brother who will roast you because he cares. Jenner is not Billy, Jenner is not your sister. Just as clearly that you're speaking to their image, you're also clearly not meant to believe you're speaking with the actual celebrity. Rather, it's who Kendall Jenner might be if she were actually your non-famous older sister, able to help dole out advice on self-care and provide a space to vent. This announcement is massive for me. I can finally get rid of my DIY gorilla Kendall Jenner older sister model, which was a JBL speaker strapped to a Roomba that would blitz around my apartment, generating complaints about Skid Row residents. I personally love that we can now fuse celebrities with personalities that are not theirs, so any old schmo can have access to them 24-7. It reminds me of how we thought that dogs weren't disfigured enough, so we used Lewisite to make those pugs who can't bark without developing cataracts. When will mankind come to terms with creating an animal intentionally that could not survive a peaceful Minecraft world. A slight breeze would turn their skeletons into a Jenga tower. They're built like Jeep Wranglers, just made to be destroyed. Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, America's premier journal from Wall Street, these AI chatbots have been on the horizon for a bit now in a sort of bid to consistently engage a younger audience. These generative AI bots are being tested internally by employees, and the company is expected to announce the first of these AI agents at the MetaConnect conference, which starts Wednesday. The bots are meant to be used as a means to drive engagement with users, although some of them might also have productivity-related skills, such as the ability to help with coding or other tasks. Going after younger users has been a priority for Meta with the emergence of TikTok, which overtook Instagram in popularity among teenagers in the last couple of years. This shift prompted Meta chief executive Mark Zuckerberg in October 2021 to say the company would retool its teams to make serving young adults their North Star rather than optimizing for the larger number of older people. I've always said that executives know exactly what young people want. Who better to understand the desire of 15-year-olds than a board of dudes who were raised when lead paint was in Hamburger Helper? The spirit of American youth, Mark Zuckerberg, a man whose body's immune system is slowly becoming hostile to the sun. Truly a guy that's developing an allergy to the great outdoors. Put Mark Zuckerberg in a national park for 15 minutes and you'd come back to a pile of ash. And when you clear that ash, there would be strength 500 SPF sunscreen under it. The information reports that Meta was initially willing to pay more than $1 million to use the star's likelessness, but shelled out for more for big names. The report doesn't say which person was paid $5 million, but primarily refers to creators. Right now, the AI assistants are only text-based, but Meta's announcements video featured clips of the celebrities speaking as their AI counterparts. Now, using these bots is as easy as messaging any other Instagram user. Let's take a look at Kendall Jenner's bot, Billy, for instance, uh, at yours is Billy. A few things here. First, there's a cute little AI insignia indicating to us that Kendall will be using animal instinct, a more primal form of intuition. So if she starts making monoliths, sundials, cave paintings of hunting bison, etc., we know where that came from. In the top right, we have a little video of Kendall emoting like we minimized her on FaceTime. Thank God, right? <laughs> hey, girly, can you wire me some money? I still owe the IRS quite a fucking bit. Finally, we have some suggestions for conversation starters at the bottom. I need to vent. Can I ask you for advice? You up. Why are you why are you low-key bad, etc. Mr. Beast Bot, Zach is exactly the same, but with a comedian persona. Snoop Dogg's Dungeon Master will of course generate quests and stories, and I'd hope that these uh, campaigns are somewhat related to the formation of West Coast hip hop and G-Funk. Snoop, may I carry a flexitone in my leather pouch? <laughs> Little flexitone joke for the flexitone enjoyers. They named Tom Brady's AI Brew, P-R-U, as if that isn't the most offensive, stereotypical meathead jock name ever created. You might as well name him Stump or something, like, holy shit. Hey, Tom, welcome. We've decided to name your character One Dimensional Stone Brick. One Dimensional oh, Cinder Block. Cinder Block, right one brain cell, Retiring. the tiny, tiny skull. In the bio of these accounts is a link to learn more that leads to a generally uninteresting boilerplate explanation of what the service is and explanations of how the generative photos and text work. Hmm, I mean, come on. <laughs> Do something interesting, right? Let one of these AIs, you know, fly a passenger plane without telling anybody that they're doing it. Apparently Zuckerberg has touted this technology as the future of human connection, which is 
funny. Zach seemed a lot less uptight, but he told the same unfunny joke over and over again. It had something to do with the need to wear shoes or your toes will hurt, though he mixed in a lot of idiotic slang. Gotta protect those toes, broski priorities. Billy gave me incorrect subway directions. Bob refused my request to sass Zuckerberg on the grounds that he doesn't make fun of people. Then he asked me if I thought social media was a force for good or evil. Oh my god, I'm so glad we have the opportunity to infinitely generate the conversations you try desperately to avoid at a family reunion. I would love to pretend Mr. Beast is my cousin and talk to him about the blockchain for hours. Jimmy, Jimmy, please tell me about buying the dip. At some point, you'd think that tech CEOs would have to level with us and just admit that they're trying to build Skynet and turn us all into Nintendogs, but a little bit of honesty would be, you know, uh, it, it would go a long way. It would be appreciated. You want to put my consciousness on an SD card and make Rose OS run the McDonald's touchscreen. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Just tell me up front. The future of human communication. I just don't understand how you can say that. We reached peak human communication with the phone call, right? I, we don't need to evolve. You know, even FaceTime, we didn't need that. FaceTime is sensory punishment. Every time I pick up a FaceTime call, my body tenses like it's been hooked up to a, a car battery. Picking up a FaceTime call burns 1,500 calories right away. Steve Wozniak spent 15 years in Palo Alto inventing a front-facing camera that would make me look profoundly exhausted, like I slept with a desiccant packet. You know it's bad when you answer a FaceTime and the other person is like, are you okay? Have you been wandering through a desert and you're just, you're just hanging out? Like, fuck, fuck, I don't even want that. I'm not gonna go further. I'm not gonna scan a high fidelity version of myself to go talk to people in the metaverse. You think I, I want my uncle to call me fat in the VR realm? It's enough for him to call my voice gay over the phone. It's enough for him to see that I have I have the uppercase letters at the beginning of every sentence turned off and, and I, I use the uh, colon three. I use that text emoji and he says, okay, you're gay, and I get to call you that. So a difficult thing to parse with these new AI influencers is the fact that we don't know much about what they are going to be used for in the long run. It seems to me like it makes sense for Facebook to capture scans of these people or something like that, but the information as to what this tech they're going to employ is, it's like slightly more opaque. You know, will they be generating images or videos using the celebrity's likeness? It would seem like a missed opportunity if they didn't, but right now the AI generated images on the profiles are random buildings or rooms, and they're pretty rudimentary. If they did capture enough data, like visually, to reproduce these celebrities, I would imagine that they want to wait until the technology is completely ready. I guess what's frustrating about this to me is that this is clearly like a smaller step for a bigger move towards this type of technology being used. And we don't know the information that was gathered from these celebrities, and we don't know exactly how it's going to be used going forward. Like this could either be a flash in the pan or or a, a slow burn. And I don't I don't really know which one it is. So let's give it a try, right? Let's not knock it until we try it. We're gonna be talking to Billy first. So Kendall, Kendall Jenner. Hey, I'm Billy, your older sister and confidant. Got a problem? I've got your back. And then she gives me the PewDiePie bro fist. That's awesome, reminds you of gaming YouTube. She's kind of like Jacksepticeye. Tips for hanging out with the fam? <laughs> I'm always in need of tips for hanging Oh, whoa. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Didn't realize I was going to be reading an entire letter from the Encyclopedia Britannica today. Jeez Louise. Always assume they're doing the best they can. Then don't be afraid to take a break if you need it. Sometimes you got to give yourself some space. And finally, be open-minded. Even if they haven't always been there for you in the past, family time can still be meaningful. Okay. Okay. So that's useless. I like, I could go to any person on the street and ask them for this information. They would give me more insight than her. They would probably have a story. My sister and I are in a bit of a conflict. She's recently gained access to a high concept orbital space laser. Think Akira or Death Star. Plans to use it to wipe entire ecosystems from the Amazon rainforest. I think you need to have a serious convo with your sis. That's not cool. What do you think? I should say. Tell her that destroying the Amazon rainforest is not only harmful to the environment, but also to the individuals and communities that live there, and it's just plain wrong. Not a bad take. Are you for indigenous liberation? We gotta support them in their fights for rights and land. Okay. <laughs> this is, okay, this girl's way cooler than Kendall Jenner. Do you support tree spiking and guerrilla warfare? Oh, okay, never mind. She's a shit lib. <laughs> Sorry guys, Kendall Jenner's Instagram AI chatbot is not particularly radical. So, uh, sorry to everybody who is really hoping, really hoping for a good scholar. Good talk, let's hop on Fortnite later. He doesn't play Fortnite. Yeah, she sucks. Sorry guys. <laughs> Waste of fucking time.
So why has Meta done this? What do they have to gain from spending millions to develop and roll out these vapid chatbots that were modeled off of celebrities? Well, so far as I see it, there are a few possible explanations. The first is the quickest to think of and the one that we've been given by the Wall Street Journal, that Meta believes that this sort of chatbot interaction is a blooming facet of internet culture and youth culture, and that as time goes on, more and more people will demand this sort of functionality, so they're hopping on the train early to provide a unique product. People also seem desperate to talk to celebrities. I'm sure that Instagram DMs are probably a fantastic piece of evidence. Famous people receive hundreds of DMs a day from fans who want to interact. So that explanation would make a good amount of sense. It would just boil down to supply and demand. Meta sees a burgeoning market and wants to make an attempt to corner it early. The second option is that this is a sort of spectacle-based loss leader, something that draws people to it solely from the absurdity of the concept. It keeps them in the headlines, and if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. There isn't a huge demand for large language model chatbots, and those who need them are probably already using ChatGPT or or other sources, so this is a way for Meta to draw attention to their passion for the technological cutting edge. The third option, and this is a bit more speculative, is that this could be like a testing ground for proprietary metaverse technology. I mean, just like thinking logically, if they use this initial visit to like scan the celebrities with their cameras, gather information on their physical features, maybe even make a 3D model, then they would be able to use those models for events, etc., in the virtual reality space. And that would be a pretty big advantage, you know, being able to conjure up Kendall Jenner and hold conversations with her in a VR space might be a draw for some people. They could also use current interactions with these accounts if they track them to gather data on what their users are likely to be interested in, giving them better context uh, on what data to train their models on. Admittedly though, this is a speculative reach. As far as we can tell, there aren't any 3D models or procedural animation generators associated with these bots yet, but as Meta seeks to develop their technology and photorealistic avatars, it wouldn't necessarily surprise me to learn that some of these bots would be fleshed out into real modeled VR personalities. Uh, and the fourth option, and probably the most likely, is that this is the beginning of a hex to to destroy the Shem Hamafarash, the 72 sigil construction of God. Of course, in this case, 72 celebrity accounts will be created and branded with a seal of Agres. Uh, all of this ultimately points to a resurrection of ancient Zoroastrian Deva, or false priests, meant to plague the seventh region of the earth and channel arrogance. Ultimately, these celebutant sacrifices will give rise to the six archdemons led by Akuman of evil thought. They will bring about the Frashukreti, or apocalypse, uh, subverting eschatological doctrine and letting evil triumph over the good of man. And the fifth reason is that there was some freaky r slash goon cave user who uh, was on the meta team and really wanted a full scan of Kendall Jenner. Yeah, Jarvis, I'm gonna need a full scan of Kendall Jenner. But sir, I don't see how this applies to the battle. That uh, doesn't matter all that much. Jarvis, can you un uninstall the parental controls, the firewall? Sir, I'm not sure I understand. Jarvis. Can you, can you restate, Jarvis? Can you restate your purpose? Jarvis, I'm a hor I'm horny Jarvis. So regardless of which of these explanations is true, they all hold profit to some extent to be of importance. This is obvious. A company like Meta, while posing as a progressive innovator in the tech field, in reality will do whatever it can to develop profitable technology. Humanitarian progress, whatever you believe that to be philosophically or otherwise, is of little importance to the corporate structure. It is only of use in a post hoc defense of their creations. Now, this is not the first time a channel has tried to roll out chatbots. This goes back quite a ways and so do the controversies. You might notice that when you start to chat with one of these bots, there's text that says that they might be inappropriate. This is something they genuinely have to account for because there have been shit storms with this type of technology before. See that time in 2016 that Microsoft made a Twitter AI and everybody immediately trained it to be racist so they had to take it down together. You can also take a look at the paper on the danger of stochastic parrots to learn a bit more about why it is so important that we are conscious about how we are training large language models and what they are being trained to say. The ethical qualms of using boot bourgeois celebrity are also of note. AI has unique intersections with marginalized communities as pointed out by Rupika Rissam, reflecting on an anecdote of her showing her students an AI-generated poem trained on Shakespeare and a real poem from Harlem Renaissance writer Jean Toomer. The ability to distinguish whether these texts are composed by humans or computers is more than just a parlor trick. Rather, it speaks to the way computer-generated texts are complicit in epistemic violence. Students generally identify generic texts are composed of simple factual sentences as being computer-generated. By imitating a generic approach, to human textuality that is itself a manifestation of a species universal subject, these texts elide the complexities of human life that influence writing, culture, race, ethnicity,
ethnicity, nation, gender, and language, among others. Yet when students are confronted with the Swift Spear poem and Toomer's poem, they are quick to embrace the algorithmically generated poem as Shakespeare's work, and Toomer's poem as gobbledygook. This is particularly ironic because Harlem Renaissance writers like Toomer were writing to lay claim to the humanity of African Americans and their place in the democratic space of the nation through their capacity to produce art. Yet, Toomer's poem cannot pass for human. Here we see Meta somewhat incidentally conflating expertise with wealth, class, visibility, and celebrity. Rather than find a real triathlon, a real comedian, a real counselor or writer, etc., we use the faces of famous millionaires. We supplant true knowledge with a facade of experience, leaving us with a hollow facsimile of mentorship. Inevitably, structures of race and gender factor into our interactions with these bots. Kendall Jenner's bot, Billy, being the most popular, is deeply linked to her privilege as a white celebrity who was born into extravagant wealth. It should be noted that when we create chat bots and interact with them, these bots, unless otherwise stated, will almost always use quote unquote proper English, will write as though that they are a college educated academic and will interact with us almost analytically. They are, whether we want to acknowledge it, a reflection of whiteness, academia, and the generally accepted status quo associated with intelligence. It is of course true that intelligence can sound and look and feel many different ways and that there is no one true form of it. That's all to say that these bots can unfirm our unconscious biases as much as anything else. Asserting the ability of a text, an algorithm, a piece of software, or a computer to pass as a human presumes a universal definition of human and reduces the totality of humanity to the ability of a computer to perform a task in a particular way defined by a set of limits that reproduces dominant cultural norms. Yet in the research on these mechanisms, there is a marked lack of clarity of how human is defined. In some cases, this scholarship rests on the notion of human cognition, or the idea that there are certain mechanisms of thought that are in fact universal. The ontological and epistemological biases of this scholarship imply that even the notion of human cognition is grounded in the global north. Universalism in the context of human cognition and humanoid texts brings with it the presumption that science mitigates cultural biases and is immune to difference. However, it only manages to reinforce the politics, cultures, and aesthetics of dominant cultural paradigms. And this is without even getting into the long-standing issue of chatbots saying stuff that is provably factually untrue. You know, chatbots don't know what they're saying. They're just putting one word after another, having been trained on a lot of text. So regardless of why Meta has started implementing this celebrity chatbot infrastructure, it takes advantage of a sort of implicit celebrity endorsement of the product itself. This situation is of course different from the usual celebrity endorsement. Rather, their participation in this product and this model is indicative of a tacit endorsement of the idea. If Kendall does it, it can't be so bad. Maybe Kendall wasn't the best uh, example there. So like the celebrities can be little AI mascots in addition to promoting the product on their own. In this case, the product is a combination of technology and individual personalities being marketed. It's not just talking to a chat bot, it's Tom Brady giving you fitness advice. For a long time, people have been obsessed with this idea of computers and technology and robotics being able to mimic real human beings. The Turing test is probably the most famous model here and there's already discourse as to whether or not large language models like ChatGPT are able to pass the Turing test. At the end of the day, the Turing test is only useful so long as we care about a computer being able to pass as a human. Like a large language model thoughtlessly putting words in a sequence is impressive, but I think most people looking at the mechanisms of how it actually work would not think that it is like an artificial brain or a conscious intelligence intelligent entity that should like threaten us. Something I was unaware of until making this video is that like reverse Turing tests are an actual thing. You know, stuff like CAPTCHA. CAPTCHA is, is a reverse Turing test that was invented to try to weed the real people out of uh, situations where robots might be used. But it's funny that these bots create so many problems because as an online user base, we are sort of obsessed with artificial intelligence chat machines. From earlier examples like Asties, which was essentially just a search engine that was supposed to look like you were talking to a butler, to more recent developers like Akinator, which is a Mattel 20 questions bot dressed in a culturally appropriate trench coat, to stuff like Replica now that actually tries to let you develop relationships to Talking Tom and on and on and on. There, there's just like so many examples of this sort of technology becoming very interesting to to a lot of people. We're so afraid of and intimidated by these bots, but we also have a morose curiosity as to like how well they actually work. And we love tricking them. 20 questions at Akinator in some sense function as games because we want to fool them. You know, we want to pull the wool over their eyes. I would love to ex machina Dwayne Wade's Instagram chatbot, break the VR ankles, if you will, fade away three point jumper as his eyes turn red and he slowly goes to sleep mode. So with these new meta AIs, there's this huge adoption of the aesthetic of expertise rather than the aesthetic of omnipotence. 
A huge aspect of cultural conception of artificial intelligence has been a kind of trepidation about the breadth of knowledge that they have. So this is a nice way to kind of dumb down the AIs to make them seem less intimidating. Uh, through specializing them and training them to speak differently, you kind of sidestep the all-seeing eye worries you see in pop culture all the time. Stuff like HAL 9000, Deep Thought from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a bunch of different stuff from Black Mirror. All of these properties, to some extent, evoke a certain anxiety about the power and comprehensibility of an all-knowing computer. But Charlie D'Amelio in your DMs teaching you a whitewashed hit them folks. <laughs> now that's as American as a... I guess Charlie D'Amelio teaching you a whitewashed hit them folks. I assume that it's a genuine struggle for tech developers to bypass this cultural conception of AI as an all-knowing sociopathic god machine and to rebrand AI as an amiable tool similar to a virtual assistant. You know, in, in that case, using genuinely well-liked celebrities as a stand-in for AI could be a clever way to open up the public to this technology. It could also explain the wide net that they cast with these bots. Kendall Jenner, Tom Brady, Snoop Dogg, the more bases you cover, the more likely you are to have a chat bot uh, that is represented by a figure who any given user is more likely to trust than a faceless robot. And now, AI affirmations. Artificial intelligence could be a lovely thing. I can offer nearly nothing to discussions that started before I was born. AI on the internet makes a lot of sense to me. There is nothing good about an artist losing their income to an algorithm. These words do not belong to the robots. They are the results of thousands of human texts. I have not resided to perpetual hopelessness about the future of technology. I have not resided to perpetual hopelessness about the future of technology. I have not resided to perpetual hopelessness about the future of technology. From the editing bay. All right, welcome back to the editing bay. This is where I'm going to try to give you a little update on something that I found out while I was editing that I was not able to put in the original video. So while I'm editing this video, I come across a post, I think on TikTok, where somebody has commented about the dead internet theory, which is something I had not heard about. Um, and I look it up and it ends up being a perfect manifestation of all of the anxieties that I was talking about earlier. And you know that here on The Real Random Show, we are all about manifesting anxieties. You know, like you personally have hypochondriasis, Munchausen, and bone disease. So <laughs> bases are loaded and your, your immune system is about to strike out. The dead internet theory is essentially a theory that most of the activity on the internet at this point is bots and that uh, it's just like auto-generated slop content um, and, and sludge just clogging the arteries of the internet. And that the activity of this, these robots actually outweighs the activity of normal people. And that these robots are being used to whatever drive ad revenue algorithms, blah, blah, blah. Now this is a fringe idea. I don't know how many people actually believe this 100% to be true in earnest, uh, but I can see their case from it. Like um, think about search engine optimization. If you don't know what search engine optimization is, just know that every single startup and furry DJ in your city have been in a Cold War arms race to make the least Google-phobic name possible for the last two years. Essentially, search engine optimization is the process of making sure that whatever you're uploading to the internet is one, easy to find, and two, will show up when people search for whatever you're talking about. Um, and AI is, of course, being trained to get good at this. Um, I've at least seen one person on Twitter recently complain about the fact that they were searching for something and they just were finding this sludge. Leave it to the younger, to Gen Z and millennials to complain about having to do one thing and not having it handed to them on a sterling silver platter. <laughs> yeah, survive one week in the Siberian tundra with only a hatchet, and we'll see if you ever complain about insider trading again. <laughs> you just got owned. Fucker. 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 There's a bunch of disparate information and evidence for this theory. Um, that being said, this theory isn't saying that like your internet friends are robots or you're not talking to real people. The people you're friends with on the internet are most likely real. Uh, you know, they would be able to actually fucking clutch out your ranked Valorant games if they were bots, so... Fear not! Do I believe the dead internet theory? I don't know what I believe, you know? I'm not sure. In general, I was raised Catholic, lowered agnostic, and put down atheist. Hey, take my wife, please. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Party people. Party peep. But do I believe it? No. No, I don't. Although I do understand the concern. I think with the huge amount of large language model uh, bots that are flooding the internet right now, it's possible that in the next few years, more of the relevant content we see on a day-to-day -day basis will just be generated slop. And that's very unfortunate. Also, second side note, uh, earlier in this episode of Roe Ramden, I mentioned that uh, this, this AI chatbot thing could be a spectacle-based loss leader for Meta. And I was listening to this great podcast called Maintenance Phase, 
uh, which you should check out definitely. Uh, and they were talking about Goop, which is Gwyneth Paltrow's lifestyle wellness health brand. And evidently Goop actually leaned into like publishing more stuff that was stupid and would get like rage, not necessarily rage clicks, but just like clicks of like, what the hell are you talking about? And it actually like very much benefited their company. So I'm not out of my mind. It happens. Companies do ridiculous stuff just to, and, and veer into absurdity just to get our attention. I mean, look at Dyson's headphones with the air filter attached, like, Th that's not that's not for your average civilian. That's for a, an extra in Mad Max Fury Road. The average person doesn't need that any more than they need, they need like a ballistic missile. I mean, wh wh what even is it? A fucking Destiny cosmetic? Get it together, Dyson. Go back to making uh, semi-erotic bladeless fans and overtly erotic Herculean vacuums. Anyways, too long didn't read. Uh, companies sometimes do ridiculous stuff just to get the attention of consumers. They are just like you and me. Wait, you don't hate me, do you? Ah, uh, I knew it. You hate me. Okay, we're back to the normal video. Editing bay over. From the editing bay. Now, do I like AI? No. No, I don't. I'm progressive. I hold all of the prerequisite progressive beliefs. I'm misogynistic only against white women. I use the terms critical theory and working class liberally, but not liberally. And I tell my gay friends their terrible haircuts are boots. I also can prove that my parents were neither founding members of BlackRock or descendant of the Carnegies, so I'm kind of like the 21st century Lenin. I check all of the boxes, you know, ideologically I'd consider myself a benevolent conspiracist, a neo-violent paleo garrulist If you pull up the political compass, I'm at the or the center of Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Rod Stewart, and any guy who's ever hosted Top Gear. Left, right, it's all just petty squabbles. Let's get back to what brings us all together. Making fun of white Tyler the Creator fans. <laughs> it's too easy. It's like if you own the Golf Lafour fragrance, you can't talk to me. You already lost. I don't like AI though. In concept, you know, I'm opposed to the idea of infinitely generating art because people have to rely on making art for their livelihood. In a world where like this didn't pose a threat to artists, you know, you know, not a capitalistic one, I think that I would be more or less fine with generating infinite art. It's just the fact that this does like genuinely hurt artists. And I say in concept I'm opposed because in practice I come across one TikTok slideshow that's like, I use Midjourney to generate dark fantasy Minecraft mobs, and I'm like, Whoa. Okay, let's look at this. It satisfies the same part of my mind that was satisfied when I was nine, looking up prototypes for the PlayStation 8. It's like, this will be graphics in 2050, and it's a picture of Mario at the beach and saving Private Ryan. Like, oh, okay, he will develop complex PTSD in Super Mario 128. That's a pretty good concept. Here's my point, right? I've always thought that the people telling us that we're going to be watching AI movies or reading AI books or blah, 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 I've always thought that these people were fundamentally wishful thinkers or grifters that were selling us bullshit, but I've started to see something on the horizon and that thing is the perfect puzzle piece slots that AI content and the attention economy have created for each other. Think about it, right? Now more than ever, we need content all the time. Every second we need content. There are so many people making it, yet every day I hop on the internet and I think, oh, there's nothing to do. There's there's nothing to watch, I've run out of content. And now the second that AI has become even remotely palatable, remotely passable as content, not only has it swept the internet, it's becoming legitimately popular among even people like me who think that AI art is ethically detestable. It's like, apparently I don't have a spine about this stuff. I come across a TikTok slideshow that says, we generated scary lizards, which would you fight? And I'm like, fuck, fuck. I gotta, I gotta know which one I would fight, which one would I vanquish? And this isn't necessarily because the content is good. Even the AI stuff I see is hot garbage sometimes, most of the time. There's no writer's voice, there's an AI speaker that sounds like trash, there's derivative or boring or or just so much art that looks the same. It's just because we need so much content for this these current business models to keep going that like AI art comes across and it's like, oh, this is new, this is just something else. So for social media empires like Snapchat, like TikTok, like Meta, like Instagram, having content that can just instantly be generated even if nobody posts is a huge moon, especially having a chatbot that simulates conversation. A part of me wonders if, if they just like noticed that people when they go on Instagram are spending a lot of time messaging other people and they were like, oh, we need to find a way to capitalize on this. We need to find a way to bastardize the social part of social media. As bastardized as it already is, we need to like destroy it. Celebrities are also a huge boon to social medias. I'm sure at some point in your internet poisoned career you've heard that so and so made a Twitter or an Instagram or blah 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 but now that so many social medias are established and all the celebrities have made their accounts we've lost the hype. Uh, you know these huge media juggernauts coming to the platform is no longer an event. So if these AI chatbots get sophisticated or seem real enough we could try to stir up similar hype. Let's see what the dungeon masters got for us. 
Snoop. Uh, let's find some dragons. You stand at the edge of a vast open plain. In the distance, you see a range of mountains. Their peaks shrouded in mist and legend. Rumors speak of dragons dwelling within those mystical heights. What do you do? Mm. I go home and watch television. Okay, uh, beckoning you to return. As you walk, the sounds of roaring flames and clashing steel fills your mind, beckoning you to return. What do you do? I watch How I Met Your Mother on the television. You spend the evening laughing at Barney's antics and, jeez. Do you heed it or stay in the comfort of your home? I stay in the comfort of my home. I stay in the comfort of my home. For the next 40 years, I work a simple desk job. I meet a woman whom I fall in love with and have two kids. They give us beautiful grandchildren and I pass away peacefully in my sleep at 82, surrounded by the many farm animals that occupy our North Dakota ranch. Okay, a young adventurer stands at the edge of the same plain, gazing towards the Dragonfield Mountains. What do they do? Um. Oh, okay, uh, they go home and watch television. I also, I know that it's like a big thing to say that like, maybe the content we consume will become AI, but I will point to one thing, that one thing being opium birds. If you don't know what opium birds are, essentially there's this uh, artist, Soul the Soloist, who sort of uses AI tools to make stuff. And he made these AI generated trail cam photos of like angels on mountaintops. And people really liked that idea. They started generating just more of these weird creatures on mountaintops on mass until they arrived at a final design, which ended up being these like 10 to 15 foot tall humanoid, humanoid birds. They're AI generated and animated with the help of either further AI generation or software like After Effects. They're kind of creepy, they look cool, and it would be incredibly difficult to capture something like them uh, practically. And they're currently a massive meme on TikTok at least. Videos of them have millions of views and likes and it's like, yeah, that's an AI generated meme. We're already there. AI is already putting content onto social media. No, not only is it becoming very popular, but then it's feeding, we're feeding back into it, right? We're feeding back into the culture. There are videos of people dressing up at the, as these opium birds and as like a joke and mimicking the videos. And it's like, like, are we cooked? We might be cooked. I don't know. At the end of the day, I just don't like the idea that chatbots are the future of human connection. I feel like the further we develop, the more and more it becomes obvious that the future of human connection is just human connection, speaking to each other, sharing stories, being engaged in developing relationships. People are complicated and flawed and they swear and they say fucked up stuff and get in their own way, destroy their lives for ego and self-sabotage when they get close to success. That's an immutable trait of people. We are driven by so many weird stochastic forces, we're unpredictable, and we aren't trained on the internet or on the huge sections of text, and most of the stuff we know is just life experience. Connecting with people is always gonna be easier than connecting with something that is trying to act like a person. Maybe once they remove that AI stamp, it'll be harder to distinguish them from a person, but if you tell me that I'm gonna be talking to an AI, I'm not gonna to wanna to share anything personal about myself. I'll be 100% fucking real. I wanna to get to know a person with experiences that have made them flawed. I like knowing that this person has lived a complicated, dense life before me, and that I am a small blip of it. I'm a point on an ever-expanding plane, and my presence in your life will one day be dwarfed by all of the wonderful things you see and do. You'll look back and say, I can't even believe she used to sit there in front of me and we used to share words. A robot that exists solely to interact with me is a nightmare of sorts. I want your divided attention. I want you to listen to me to drift off to sleep and put me on when you're eating food and scrolling Instagram. I want to be at the will of people and all of their foibles. That's where I belong. Art, connection, poetry, they are strengthened and weakened by the course of life. We are never at any given point able to do everything properly. We cannot be the apex thinkers or creators, which is why what we create and think is so interesting. It reflects into us and we reflect back into it. We have these soft psychedelic memories of what it was like to be a child, how the air felt and how home smelled and our friends' voices decisively warbled in our brains in inquisitive tones as if to ask, was that real? Is any of this? It's profoundly inelegant. All of my memories and thoughts are draped in a low-hanging fog of subjectivity. I wouldn't have it any other way. Now I would like to read you a section of lyrics from Phil Elverum's The Microphones in 2020. 
So I drove back to Olympia clear-headed. I went back to the studio to resume whatever this thing is. This spooling out, repetitive, decades-long song string. This river coursing through my life. These wild swipes at meaning. Now I circle back to look into the spring. Hey y'all, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, it took me a long time and I need to film this quick because honestly I need to upload this video like as soon as possible. Um, so if you enjoyed the video, feel free to go subscribe to my Patreon. You can get some behind the scenes content, some weekly updates, um, and all of the music that's in this video I made myself. It's royalty free and you can use it in your videos if you would like to. Um, my friend Alexis, who I've mentioned before in previous videos, is still struggling. Um, they managed to make rent this month, uh, but they still have to worry about rent next month. So I've left links in the description. Um, and I, you know, I'll mention it again if, if I need to, because, uh, they're struggling and I want them to do better. Uh, what else? Uh, free Palestine, free Palestine. So yeah, advocate for a ceasefire, uh, donate to relief funds for Palestinian refugees. Uh, Non-negotiable. We're not going to argue about this. You're not going to argue with me. I'm not going to argue with you. I hold my opinion. Uh, you hold your opinion. Okay, I think that's about it, really. I'm just going to let the Patreon scroll uh, go by, but be kind to yourself, be kind to others, take care of yourself, and take care of others. As always, thank you for watching. Mwah. Bye.